guys. Um, today I'm going to show you how to put pedals and a chain on a bicycle. Um, specifically, um, let's see. so I bought a new bicycle for the wifey uh, the other day. It's a stone grinder motive or motive or who knows. I mean, they have weird pronunciations for anything, just about. Uh, throw a bunch of vowels and consonants together and create something and then name a bicycle after it. Anyway, a stone grinder. Um, <clears throat> it's a 24 speed. So I got a really good deal on the bike, uh, but I needed some work, namely a chain, uh, tires, and pedals. Um, I've already gone through and you know tightened up all the cables and all that. They weren't too bad. Lubed everything up, adjusted the brakes, adjusted the shifting, and all that. So, you know, and put new tires on it and tubes. All that's good. So, the only thing that's left right now is to put a new uh, chain on it and the pedals. So, um, basically, we're going to do that. A quick side note this stuff here, rock and roll gold lube. This stuff is amazing. Uh, one of my professional bicycle friends turned me on to this uh, a little over a year ago. Uh, I started using it on motorcycle stuff, you know, to lube cables and, you know, things like that. You know, it's, uh, it's not too terribly expensive. And actually, you get a huge container and a smaller container, and this is the smaller container, and this comes empty, and they give you a large container to fill this up with um, and you can use it so rock and roll gold lube this stuff is so good that it will actually displace WD-40 and other oils in other words if you spray WD-40 on your um, cables and you put this on your cables after this will actually push the WD-40 out of your cables that's how good this stuff is um, you know, I've already shaken it. That is a little, you know, a little bit of waxy stuff that's still on the bottom. If you shake it up, and it'll um, combine the waxy stuff with the fluid. And the, and the fluid dries. It's an alcohol base, I think. And the fluid dries and leaves the powderized stuff. And powderized stuff is actually a lubricant. Anyway, this stuff is amazing. And I can give you a link to it. But definitely, definitely buy some of this. Um, you know, leave your chains, leave your cables, leave your, uh, leave your railers, um, everything. Um, anything that needs lube, put this stuff on it. So, back to business. Now what we need to do is take the chain off. And sometimes there's a master link. I don't think there is a master link on this one because I believe this is the original chain. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is take the wheel off. So something like this where you have a cable in the way, see if there's anything you can do to move it, to get it out of the way. I mean, you don't want to mess this up. You know, don't that's the thing that people do and they don't realize it is they'll push you know down on a cable to get around a, a nut and all they have to do is just move it out of the way and then you know just little things like that you know keep you from having to replace stuff that you wouldn't have had to replace in other words breaking something that wasn't broken and then having to source you know find the parts it's not always easy to find parts this bolt happens to be a 15 millimeter. Um, that's another thing, a tip. Don't use standard tools on metric stuff. <laughs> if you have a metric nut or a metric bolt, use metric tools. Don't use standards and vice versa. Just because you have a bicycle, and you have a random box of tools, does not mean that you have the correct tools to work on it. Go to Harbor Freight and buy a three dollar wrench set if you don't have the right ones or socket set or whatever um, this happens to be a really nice gear wrench 84 tooth uh, ratchet this is what i use for my motorcycle mechanic stuff listen to this it's insanely precise and i absolutely love this thing I love it so much i've actually gone through this is my second one and the first one I really, really abused. Um, it, it took a lot of abuse. This one they replaced for free because the, they're technically unbreakable. 
but somehow I managed to break mine, so they replaced it for free. And then my last one was an 80 tooth, and then they gave me this 84 tooth because they, you know, upgraded it basically. They made a better version of it. So this actually comes with a whole tool set, or a whole, uh, not tool set, but a whole, you know, comes with all those. And, you know, of course, there's an extra screwdriver and a flashlight hanging out there, but that doesn't come with the kit. But comes with that whole deal there and uh, worth every penny and no I'm not getting paid to advertise them either so all right eyes and ears folks use an angle grinder because it makes things look legit. So pay attention to how things are routed. here goes up through there around there and down be sure to route it the same way otherwise it'll never work okay so we know that it goes around the top back, through the front, down, and then connects on the bottom. So now we have to compare the chain size just to make sure we bought the right chain. Technically the only difference between our two chains here is the master link. And honestly, I don't know if I'm supposed to cut one out or not. I, I don't think that one little link is going to make that much of a difference. I mean I might be completely wrong, but it seems like the derailleur would take up, you know, the difference. And I don't know, what is one link? Maybe I should research that. Hmm. So the problem with cutting one off is you're not cutting it here. You're cutting it here by, my, by the bottom thumb. And so you're actually cutting that much off when you cut one link off. So it's going to be shorter than the last chain if I do that. Whereas right now, it's longer. So, I think I'm going to leave it as is. You know, the difference between the two chains is this much, not this much. So, I'm going to leave it. Well, no. No. Because this is the master link. Techni I mean, this would be the master link. The difference is this much, not this much. So, you know what? I'm just going to leave it like it is. And we'll see what happens. Theory, that's it. Now, of course, you have to snap the uh, the uh, master link together. But for now, I just want to make sure everything's routed correctly, and I'm going to put the back wheel back on. And then all I have to do is push the master link on there. Okay, so finally, 
we take these cute little tiny vice grips and uh, put the master link on. That easy. Just make sure it's pushed all the way in. There you go. That final snap, I don't know if you heard it, but that means it's locked in place and it shouldn't come out. It only took two seconds. So now we make sure it shifts through all the gears. You gotta remember, we took these bolts loose and we took the brake loose. So you gotta remember to put those back. If you don't put those back, the wheel falls off and you die. Don't die. All right, so I have them finger tight and make sure they're at the top of the trough as far up as I'll go because that's where the alignment point is and finger tight it and put this on on a little, a little twist there a little twist here and one at a time go back and forth this is on anything you know don't just torque the hell out of one side and then do the other side and I do all of them evenly and disperse it and you also want to make sure to tighten it enough to where it's not going to fall off while you're right you don't want these to loosen up and if you buy a used bike the first thing you need to do is go over every single bolt on the bike because usually the people that you know Walmart or wherever they buy the bike from do not put the bike together well and then they ride it however many miles um, put together poorly they never you know go through all the you know all the uh, bolts and all that stuff to check on things and every bike that I've bought you know there have been some seriously dangerous things or potentially hazardous you know uh, things that I had to fix like bolts being loose in fact, this one, the front wheel was basically hanging there. It wasn't tightened at all. It was finger tight. Um, you know, and the handlebars weren't tightened enough. And it's all kinds of little things like that. So you really gotta you know, go over every bolt, you know, make sure things aren't gonna fall off. So I'm actually running out of time here. I've got five minutes left. Uh, so I'll have to do the, I'm just gonna do the pedals on my own. I'm not even gonna put those in the video. Um, but the thing to know about pedals is one is left and one is right. So what happens there is you have one that is reverse thread and one that is normal thread. Don't put the wrong one on the wrong side and don't force them in if they're not threading. If they're not threading, it means you have them on the wrong side. Don't force them. But anyway, I'm gonna have to do that on my own because um, I don't have a means of uh, plugging this camera in. And uh, well, maybe not the best video, but there's definitely a video. <laughs> um, let's see. So, if you enjoyed this video, uh, as chaotic as it was, I guess I can edit it to not be chaotic. So, if you like this video, um, you know, be sure to subscribe, uh, click the like button, and all that stuff. Comment, and um, I'll keep making more about all kinds of different things. Um, today so far I've done two videos. One was how to make a uh, Greek pasta salad kind of thing, uh, which looks like it's going to be pretty good. And then, of course, this bike video. So two in one day, I may even do a third one. I don't know. We'll see. But in the meantime, uh, be sure to click the like button and subscribe and all that stuff like I already said. And. Uh, So now that the chain is on the bike, this is where your uh, rock and roll 
So I'm trying to block that. Okay. That's where your uh, rock and roll gold loop comes into play. Um, put this on the new chain. Put it on the chain and then wipe it in with a rag. After you pour it onto the chain, wipe it with the rag and it'll make it last a lot longer. Um, I'm going to have to do a part two here in a little bit. Actually, no, I'm not going to do a part two. I'm going to add some extra information at the end that I don't have time to put in. My camera battery is literally dying right now. But stay tuned. There's more tips that you need to know. Thanks. Bye. These are not the right tools for the job. Fuck. <sighs>